Hello everyone, today we are going to implement a question answering system. For that we will fine tune BERT for question answering. And we will be using mainly PyTorch and Hugging Faces Transformers library. Before let's get into the data set, let's just check how the end result will look like. So let's say we have the context, we have the document that says you can not find the GitHub link for this video in the description. We want to learn where is the GitHub link. Let's see what will the result be. The result is GitHub link for this video in the description. The project will be structured in the following way. We will have squad dataset.py file which will contain our dataset class. We will have the main pie which will contain our training loop. We will put our quad.json data under the data directory. And lastly we will save our models under models directory. You can download the squad dataset here. I will put the link in the description. I will also put the GitHub link in the description. You can just download the training set. And if you are ready, let's just start. Most important thing to do here is to prepare the dataset class. For this, I heavily influenced from Hugging Faces old tutorials. I will put the link below in the description. So let's start. First, we import the necessary libraries. We will need torch, we will need data set. Since our data is in the JSON format, we import that. We define our class. I will call it squad dataset. We'll give the dataset object as the parameter. PyTorch dataset will need three classes. We discussed it. First is init, second one is length, which will give us the length of the dataset. And the last one is the get item, which will return us the necessary item. We will implement them one by one with some helper functions. To initialize this dataset, first we will have the data path, second we will take the tokenizer. We'll define a function called read data, which will take the data path, return us context questions and answers. After we have all of them, we will define a function called add and index. The thing here is squad data set gives us where does the answer start, but it doesn't give us where it ends. So we have to add the end index by our own, provided with context and answers. This is what we are going to do here. After that, we need to have the tokenizers of our answers of context. Tokenizer can take two argument at the same time context and question how does it tokenize them both is it adds separation special token in the middle so there will be context there will be tap special token there will be the question after that we will do the padding true it will pet our tokenized results and we will make truncation true it will truncate our tokenized results with that done we will define another function called update start and positions what it's going to do is so we have a start position and we have an end position. As a result of the tokenization, start and end indices will change. We have to update them accordingly. This will be our init. Now it's time for our get item function. For this we will get index as an argument. We will iterate the encoding items. We will return key of the encoding items and the tensor value of the value index. Last, we will need the length function. We don't need any parameters for this. We just return length of the encodings input IDs. This will give us length of the dataset. Now it's time to define the functions that we used in init. First we have the read data. We open our file. We read it from JSON. After that we will have context questions and answer lists. We will fill them one by one. First we will go into the data key. Then we will take the whole paragraph in the data. Keys of the paragraph with context will be our context. We will iterate the paragraph QNAs. QNA question will be our question. After this we will iterate QNAs answers. This will be our answer. Now first we append the context, next we append the question, after that we append the answer. I returned only the first 20,000. The reason for this is it takes a long time to train if I return the whole data set. However, this is optional if you want to train on the whole data set, you can just remove them. When I push it to GitHub, I will remove them too. Now it is time for the add and index function. As a reminder, the dataset doesn't give us where the answer ends. So we have to get it on our own. 
That's what the add and index do. As an argument, it takes context and answers. We just iterate over them. We store the text in go text. We store the start index in start index. After that, we just find the end index. We just add the length of the text to the start index. This gives us the end index. We check if the start index to end index context matches the go text. Then we found yes, the answer that we are looking for. However, in the data sets, mistakes can happen. Sometimes the indexes can be one to the left or two to the left in the square data set. So to handle that, we just add these two additional statements. What this does is if the answer is one index to the left, we just update the parameters accordingly. If it is two index to the left, we update the parameters accordingly. Okay, update the start index two to the left, for example, for this. We update the end index two to the left. After that, we just return the answer with the end index. Last type of function we are going to implement is update start and end positions. As a reminder, what this does is we have the start indexes, we have the end indices. However, after the tokenization, number of tokens will change. So end and start index will need an updating. This is what we are going to do here. First, we will need a list of new start positions and new end positions. Now we will utilize a function called character to token. What this does is we have the original answer start, and this will map us to the location where the encoding says that. So this will be our new start position. We append it to the start positions. We do do the same to the answer end. However, we just subtract one. Here we check if the start positions we added last is none. We just replace it with the maximum of the model length. We can take that from tokenizer. This was for the start positions. Now we will do it for the end position. So if it is minus one is none, it means that we have truncated input. And as a last, we create a new key for the encodings called start positions. We create a new encodings called end positions. We add assign the new lists to that. Lastly, we return the encodings. This was the implementation for the data set. Let's check if it works or not. We can just create a main function. We will need our tokenizer. Let's just load the tokenizer. Now we call our data set. To check if the data set works, we will just print the zeroth index of our data set. Let's come here and run it. As you can see, it is working well. We have the attention masks. We have the start position as a tensor and position as a tensor. We have everything that we need. Let's get back to the main file and delete this since we won't need it. Since we created our data set, we can continue with actually training our model. First, we will import the necessary libraries. We will import Torch, some helper functions from Torch. We will need transformers some transformer functions. We will need to calculate F1 score. We have to track the progress. And of course we will import the data set we defined. Let's create a main function. This is to suppress the transformers warnings. We need our device, whether we are going to use GPU or CPU. Now it's time for our hyperparameters. These are optional, you can do however you like, but I set the learning rate 5 e to minus 5, batch size to 16, epochs to 3. Now we have to give the data pad. This is where you store your data. It is under your data directory, like here. This is your model path or the model link, depends on where you are loading, where you want to save your model. I save mine under the models. Like I said, these are optional. Now let's load our tokenizer and our model. Our model is BERT, not just BERT, but BERT for question answering. Okay, this is important. Do you want to put our model to whatever device we are working on? Let it be GPU or CPU. We will define our data set. We gave data path and we have to pass the tokenizer to it. As a result, we have our data set returned. We have to split our data set to train, validation and test. For that, we will need the generator first from Torch. After that, we will use the random split function. We pass the data set and we pass the ratios we want it to be split to. So train data set will have 0.8, well data set will have 0.1, and test data set will have 0.1 of the whole data set. Next, we will need our data loader. For that, first do it with train data loader. We pass our batch size and we shuffle the true. Do the same for the validation and test data sets. Let's define our optimizer. I will use addmv. As parameters, we pass model.parameters and our learning rates. Now it's time for our training loop. 
We have to iterate a number of epochs, so we will use this loop. We set our model to train mode, so we will do training now. We will store the overall training loss at this variable. We will iterate through the train data loader with this. We will take the input IDs, we will put it to device. Same for the attention mask, start positions and end positions. After that, we feed them into the model. We can't get the loss of the model with this. We can just say outputs.loss. The transformer returns us that. We do optimizer zero grad, and after that we just update our loss and optimizer. And when it is all done, we divide the, our loss to the index plus one. This gives us our training loss for each epoch. When a training is done, we have to also calculate validation loss. So we take the model into the evaluation mode. Again, this is our overall validation loss. Since we are not going to update gradients, we will use with torch no grad. This will prevent it from updating gradients and waste computation resources. We will iterate validation data loader. We will have our input IDs. We will put them to device. We will have our attention masks. We will put them into device too. We will have start positions and we will have end positions. As usual, we get the outputs by feeding them to the model. After that, we update our validation loss score. This is our overall validation score for one epoch. Again, we divide it by index plus one. In the end, we just print the training and validation loss for each epoch. After our training is done, we save the model to our model save path and we save the tokenizer to our model save path too. Also, we want to test our model. We want to have one score on test data too. To do that first, let's empty the cache from CUDA. This will free up some GPU memory for you. After that, we put the model to evaluation mode one more. We will store the predictions in this list and we will store the true labels in this list. Since we are doing testing, we again will use with torch no grad. We will iterate through the test data loader. As usual, we will have input IDs put to device. We will have attention masks put to device. For the start positions, we don't want them to put into GPU. We want them to stay on the CPU because we will store them in the true list. If you don't do it, you won't have enough memory. Same for end positions. After that, we will get the outputs. For this, we just feed the model the input IDs and attention masks since we are not doing anything with loss. We just want the predictions. We get the start prediction with torch argmax function. It will give it dimension one. Since again, we are going to store it. So we put it into CPU and we detach that. We do the same for the end prediction. In the end, we put them into pred and true lists. We have flattened out the preds and we flatten out the true. Calculate F1 score, I use stlearns F1 score function. Actually, for squat dataset, there is a bit different way of calculating F1 scores. But for sake of simplicity, I just use stlearns F1 score to give you an idea. But if you want, you can use another calculation method too. We print our F1 score too. To run this, we will just go to our terminal and it will start running. If you trained your model now, let's go and do some predictions. Let's start by importing pipeline from transformers. After that, we will use that pipeline. We will give question answering as a task. We will give our model pad to model. For mine, I saved it under models with the name QA bat base. We will name tokenizer and we will give the same pad to. We will assign it to QA model variable. After that, we will come up with some question. Where is the GitHub link as an example for this? Now we will give a context. This context is where we want to search the answer from. Context is, you can find the GitHub link for this video in the description. We can find the answer by giving question and context as arguments to QA model and print it. Let's give the command. As you can see, answer is GitHub link for this video in the description. Thank you for listening. I will put the GitHub link in the description and see you.